Welcome to Once More With Feeling, Damned If You Do, the newest album from Metal Church, presented to you by me, Edmund, and... Me, Billy. So, yes, um, never heard of this band, I just decided, you know what, it's an album that's coming out in December, and it's old school thrash, so I thought, yeah, let's give it a go, let's look into what they're like. Lead singles seemed fun, and... If you don't mind me asking, which of these was the lead single? Because um, I remember you tossed me two of the tracks, which was By the Numbers and Damned If You Do. Which was their lead single, anyways? Um, I believe it was Damned If You Do as the lead single. Okay, I could see why that drug, dry, dry, you know, why, why that drug your interest into the album. Mm. See, I can talk. <laughs> Yeah, like, I see, okay, this whole year I've been dried up and crying inside because there hasn't been a decent metal album released. There have been some metal-ish bands who've released albums, but I would not say that the album was metal. I'm looking at you, Shine Down, and a few other bands who I do not want to mention today because I am coming for you, Bullet from my Valentine! <laughs> I'm coming for you later. Disclaimer, Billy is amazingly butthurt about Bullet for my Valentine and Edmund has no idea why. They know exactly what they did to me. They know it. <laughs> Anyways, Metal Church. We're here to talk about Metal Church today, which of course is a metal band from the 1430s. <laughs> um, they, they stowed away, of course, on the Santa Maria, chilling with Columbus. Um, when they came over to the, to the New World, they did battle, of course, with... Uh, I think it was Montezuma who was being being assisted by Stalin. It's it's an amazingly uh, long-winded and beautiful story of Metal Church. All joking aside, these guys are old school, like good old school. We're talking 80s, you know, power ballads and hair metal. Like this, this is old school, old school, old school. This is the stuff I grew up with when I was in my 20s, weirdly, even though it was first coming out when I was in my single digits. Don't ask, Idaho's a weird place. And this is the stuff that I did grow up with, with my brother who's 12 years older than me. And Yeah, he's my age, so... <laughs> and basically, I was actually quite surprised that I'd never encountered this band before, because it's sort of like, they've toured with the Big Four, they've toured with Accept and Wasp and Saxon and all those sorts, and it's sort of like, how have I never heard of these guys before see i had never heard of them well, i shouldn't say never i had heard of them but i did not realize i had heard of them when i went back through their old catalog i started recognizing music going hey i remember listening to that when i was younger holy crap these guys are great so i got extremely excited after i listened to their lead singles uh you know damned if you do and by the numbers you got me hooked immediately on the band by that and i was waiting patiently for the you know, the tracks to start getting released. What was it on the 5th? or 7th. What was it? 7th, sorry. I'm a little, a little uh, out of weather right now. It's four days I've been listening to this tracks and this tracks. Yes, the singular multiple tracks. Um, yeah, once, once it got released, I was listening to it in my car. And uh, I've mentioned this in other reviews with you that I do a lot of deliveries as my job. Mm. So I'm in my car a lot. And it's difficult to find appropriate music because I need to have something pumping and exciting and interesting and fun, something I can sing along with, so that way it kind of just passes the time along. And this album has some of that. Oh, God. Yeah, this is not going to be a, me giving the, the band a glowing review. This is me going to be giving the band a You Did Better Than I Expected review. Because this year has been full of absolute disappointments with bands I love. So you've done better than many of the others. Congratulations! Well, before... But there's a big asterisk next to, next to that for me. Because I, I have issues with this, with this album. But they're not glowing to the point where I can't love the album. I will definitely be playing it plenty of times. But yeah, I have, I have some gripes. I have some complaints. But I will let you glow on it first. Okay, so before we do get on to the bitch fest, which will make me go, did we listen to the same album? Uh, as undoubtedly it will. Um, this was the Mariah Carey album we're talking about, right? 
<laughs> oh lord, don't bring that up again. <laughs> I, I personally felt that the lead singles were representative of the album as a whole. You had a lot of force, you had a lot of energy. The title track was the opening track and it was a good lead-in because it gets you pumped up, it draws you in, and I, I won't deny, most of it is territory that's been tread before. You know, in this case, it's the regardless of your actions whether saintly or venial, you're destined to damnation. There was a lot of Satanist references throughout the whole thing, which that was really big back in the 80s. It kind of got dropped in the 90s, and by the 2000s, metal had moved on. It wasn't just devil horns and, you know, sacrilegious shit, which was kind of a down point for me in this album. I don't care. Don't really care. I'm not religious. I don't really give a shit either way. It was just kind of a really really we're really gonna just talk about satanism like openly again like the last several decades of music hasn't happened all right, all right. well if you think about it this whole year's been a throwback to the 80s well in the united states more of the 70s but sure well if you think about how sort of like during the 80s you guys were living in constant terror that there was going to be a nuclear attack and all that sort of thing and oh, you were referencing that. You weren't talking about some of the other things taking place. Fair enough! Yeah, just a nuclear attack is the only thing we want to discuss right now because there's no politics behind that at all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to keep it on on the... what has been a major f subject and fear in recent months and... Oh, Jesus. Fair enough. Anyway... Back to yeah, let's, Church. Yeah, let's discuss the crazy devil horns and the constant references to black magic. <laughs> that seems more topical at this point. Like, okay, let's let's reference another band that does talk about that, but in a, in a different light. Let's talk about uh, Power Wolf. Power Wolf constantly references either demons, devils, angels, either sacrilegious or in some cases actually quite uh, serosanct, where they actually are praising angels. Like, they're all over the map, honestly. But it doesn't somehow feels less heavy handed to me than than some of the references in this in this album. And I don't know why. I genuinely don't know why that feels that way to me. I mean, I didn't so much pick up on the biblical allusions as much as it put me in mind of Operation Mind Crime by Queensryche. If you're at all familiar with that album. A little bit. So, especially in songs like Into the Fold, I was put in mind of Operation Mindcrime, having the figure of Dr. X conjured up. You know, this manipulative, subversive cult-like figure who warps and twists perceptions. Maybe it's because of my own upbringing that I didn't really read biblical references into a lot of it. Well, there's a lot less religious directly, and like, there's still a lot of references to Satanism, which... You'll hear it in Damned If You Do, Black Things, um, Rot Away, Monkey Finger. Out of Balance, I believe, also has some references in there. There's a lot of references to Satanism in this. I'm not saying that they're Satanists. I'm just saying the music itself is just pervasive with it, which is perfectly fine for old school metal. You heard that shit all the time. I mean, Black Sabbath was essentially just a constant stream of Satanist <laughs> bullshit. And I don't think that he was Satanist at all. You know, um, Ozzy Osbourne, I think he just did it just as a stage thing. Mm. Most of them were that way. Like Alice Cooper was that way, where he had a lot of Satanist references in his music. Because mm. it was just the thing you did. So it kind of feels like they just never got out of that as far as for their style of music. Which, once again, doesn't really affect me. It's more of just a, wow, this is this is old. This is the kind of thing I heard, you know, when I was popping up my Alice Cooper and so on. Just, this feels very dated as, as a result. See, for the most part, I didn't really get that impression. I mean, with the black things, sort of. But I felt that was more oblique and just discussing the terror of being played with by unknowable forces. So that could be anything from demonic entities to nightmare children to government mind control, <laughs> Cthuloid monsters, your wife, any of that sort of stuff. Hey, hey, don't bring in my ex-wife into any of this. She doesn't deserve <laughs> that kind of punishment. Yeah, like, as far as for a gripe, it's a minor gripe. It's not even a real big one. I could see how some parents, if they walked in, they heard their kid listening to this, they'd lose their shit in this country because they either misinterpreted or they would go, Oh my God, Timmy, you're listening to the devil! 
my parents told me that that was bad. You know, I'm sure that exists in some parts of this country, but like a, a scale one to ten, it's like a two. It's not a big deal. It's just a dated thing more than anything, in my opinion. I mean, the irony is that uh, you kind of give a major point to what Monkey Finger is all on about, because that's actually a sneering commentary on... The whole idea behind that is monkey see, monkey do, because it's sort of like if you've got one person pointing their finger, you're going to end up with a whole host of people doing that. Now, let's talk about how bands love to open and close in their albums. Mm. So, Damned If You Do, the moment that popped up on my in my car, most of the time I have my, my volume setting at a pretty low setting, so that way I can still hear the world around me while I'm driving, right? Mm. As soon as Damned If You Do popped on... I cranked it to the point where the people five cars away were forced to listen to it. <laughs> so I want to point out, I liked a lot of this album. The first track blew me away when I heard it in my car, rocking out with my speakers, scaring little children. I was excited. By the time I got to Guillotine, I stopped being as excited. Like, the album starts out, in my opinion, amazingly well. The first four tracks are good. By Guillotine, it starts to lose a lot of its power it's focus i stopped singing along with the lyrics it wasn't as gripping by the time you got to out of balance i was really kind of at a is this is this the same album uh, uh, okay by the war electric i was done i did not like the war electric it was a terrible outro in my opinion it did not fit at all the feeling it started with it felt like I was on like the worst roller coaster where all the cool drops were at the beginning and then the remainder of it was basically doing my taxes. That's kind of how the album ended in my opinion. See, I actually really enjoyed Out of Balance and The War Electric. In fact, part of the reason why I liked Out of Balance so much is because of how unusual it is in terms of lyrics. See, this is why you guys lost the Revolutionary War. S this, this is the entire explanation right there in a nutshell. Uh, you just don't understand what good music is. This is not good music. Well, actually, that's not true. You just don't understand what, you know, good metal is. That's why we won the metal wars. That's why the robots will take us over first. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll shut up. You can continue making your very, very valid point. Because the thing is, out of balance, that's actually a discussion on how aimlessness and having little to occupy your time can exacerbate feeling depressed and off kilter which is one of those wait a thrash album is discussing that okay <sighs> i'm just saying from a music standpoint my brain was like nope this is not the album i wanted not by the end of it i just was not that interested it just it felt just so alien by that point it didn't sound at all like the album i expected it just it got by that point i was just I was done. Would you say this album would be better served by some song rearrangement? Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Like, because I'm not saying that The War Electric was a bad track. It was a weird one. Mm. I mean, the vice on his testicles had to be had been squished quite aggressively to get him up to those high notes. <laughs> sweet Jesus. I'm pretty sure he legitimately was hitting those and that they weren't auto-tuning him, so... Yeah, like I thought the Bee Gees had a had like had like the the corner on ridiculously high frequencies for men, but now I'm thinking he might actually be ahead of them on that one. <laughs> Maybe rearranging it a little bit to have a stronger finish, in my opinion, might have been better. Because mm. it's always the thing I always look at is it's because in a live set you wouldn't want to finish with the War Electric because it's just going to leave your audience going, "Hooray! This was not the outro we were looking for." Play the piano, man. I mean, like, there, there's gonna be a lot of people out in the audience going, "That's that's the finish. That's the end." Okay. So maybe into the fold as the closing track. Maybe that might work. Because I wouldn't want to take "Damned If You Do" off the beginning, because that's mm. you need something to snap people's attention. Yeah. "Damned If You Do," fucking does. Like "Damned If You Do" is the reason why I'm going to now own some metal church, um, you know, some of their some of their tat. Because I'm buying at least a shirt, if not more, just because of that song alone. By the numbers was good, which is mildly hilarious that by the numbers I'm going to be buying some shit as a result of. But it's good. I liked the first half. It's just the second half. I don't know if rearranging it much would help. I mean, changing out the last song for Into the Fold would probably help. Because Into the Fold is still good metal. Like, even Out of Balance wasn't bad metal. Mm. It still has a nice driving feel to it. Because you'd want a power ballad as your final one. If you want to go by true old school metal... Well, that's the thing, because Thrash doesn't really do ballads as closers. That's typically middling songs. Well, 
I don't care. I'm telling you from like an audience standpoint, damn it. No, I I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because it's still like for any of you out there who are like, I don't know if I want to buy this. Fucking buy it. Mm -hmm. Straight up, buy it. If you're a metalhead, buy this album because if you don't buy this album, artists like this will go put out that garbage that Shinedown did. So please buy this fucking album. Tell them that this is what you want. Because if you fail to do that, Many, many bad albums will be made. If I have to listen to this versus Shine Down, I will listen to this any goddamn day. Would you say that after 13 listens, you'd probably warm up to all the songs? Well, I mean, I'm up to about six listens at this mm. point. Because I, I had the album on repeat. Like, the first time, I was, like, you know, bouncing in my car, singing. I was probably scaring everyone around mm. me. All the way up until about track eight, I was still pretty excited because I was still like, okay, okay, there's still magic and mystery around the corner. What's the next one going to be? But by the time I got to Monkey Finger, I was kind of on a low. The second listen, I was already still on a high once again until about Guillotine. And then I was like, okay, well, I know what the rest of this album's got going for it, but maybe, maybe I can make myself love it like I tried with Shine Down. By, by listen six, I had my favorites and I was like, you know what, um... I'm going to still listen to the rest of the album to do it the courtesy, but it kind of just feels like it's a courtesy at that point rather than really being in love with the rest of it. So this is one of those ones for me where it's kind of like when you hop on a wave when you're trying to surf and the first few seconds are exhilarating until you get thrown off the board and you're like, well, fuck, what am I supposed to do for the rest of the the rest of the wave while I watch it sail away from me? Because apparently it wasn't for me. Because that's just how it feels to me is that the first half of this album is for me. I'm excited. But by guillotine... It starts to kind of waver, and the rest of it is just obviously not for me, which is fine. I, I'm not saying that every track on an album has to be for me specifically, because, you know, obviously I'm not every member of their audience. Mm. But from my standpoint, the album ends at track four. <laughs> Everything yeah, beyond that yeah. point is just the extras, which is fine, because I still can listen to them and not go, oh, God, with the exception of The War Electric. The War Electric is the one where once it comes on, I'm already looking for another album to try to listen to. So 9 out of 10 are good. 4 out of 10 are amazing. 1 out of 10 is god-awful. I don't find any of these god-awful. I'm going through my scores. War Electric, I will say I probably scored it a bit higher than normal but i will admit a lot of what we've covered previously have lowered my expectations so significantly (laughs) that i'm just like yeah i'm just giving out the scores at this point you've become the ign of music reviewers anything below a 7 out of 10 equals a really really bad game the the score starts at 7 out of 10 no i'm not I'm not that bad. It's just you know, with Shine Down and uh, what other albums have really depressed me. Like, well, I mean, we even skipped over an album this year that both of us were like, "Oh, hey!" After it was what it was, because Christina Aguilera put out put out that album, yeah. right? Then we both were like, "Hey." Hey, look, uh, it was what, uh, Jay-Z and was one who put out the Carters? I can't remember who the fuck put yeah, out the Carters. We and... both grabbed the Carters going, Ugh. yeah, we grabbed the Carters thinking, hey, this is going to be a great album because, you know, the last album we didn't expect to be great was fucking amazing. We both listened to the Carters and by track two, we were like, nope, not even reviewing this. Nope, nope, just throw this in the bin. I'm not going to touch it. This is just bad. So, yeah, expectations have definitely been lowered on, on what we wanted to cover. <laughs> With that said... And I'm willing to agree with you. This is not the album I wanted, necessarily, but it's definitely still worth my time. I still will gladly listen to this. This will definitely enter my rotation for what I listen to while I drive, much to the horror and terror of anyone around me. But I will say, this is lower grade of my metal than I typically listen to, because I listen to a lot of very heavy new metal. Mm -hmm. So this is a return to old school stuff, which... As I've mentioned in the past in other reviews, I don't listen to a lot of older metal anymore. You know, I don't listen to, like, Pantera or Slayer or Metallica because they've kind of grown into just a meandering noise in the background of my mind. So I don't like that stuff much anymore. But this is good. I enjoyed this. Right when we started listening to this album Mm. on the 7th, I was driving around. And we've got a we got a franchise in, in uh, not just California, it's in pretty much most of the United States now called Panera Bread. 
my brain read that as Pantera bread while I drove by. I was like, that is the most metal fucking like bread shop. I've- oh, wait, that's Panera. Never mind. <laughs> it's like, is there blood that pours out of the... Because they, they serve soup. So is there blood soup and blood bread? Do they have blood ham? Does everyone inside there just simply slaughter their children and make love to the devil? I think that would be Slayer bread. That's true. Fair enough. Yeah, that would definitely be Slayer bread. Slayer bread. As a comedian once said, two men can make sweet, sweet love together. And as long as they're listening to Slayer, everything's perfectly fine and there's no gay sex happening. Slayer! Anyway, let's go over favorite songs on the album. So yours are Damned If You Do and By The Numbers. Any others? Like, Black Things was good. Mm. I was still singing along to it. I was still dancing in my seat. Once again, Revolution Underway is pretty good. I like the way way it goes on. It's got a good beat to it. Uh, The lyrics are pretty interesting. After that, not a whole lot, to be honest. Like, Into the Fold was good. Not great. Out of Balance was good. Not great. The rest of it was was still good-ish. And then, yeah, you already know what I have to say about War Electric. So that would be, like, the beginning of the album definitely is what what, what won me over initially. Mm. Gave me enough of a high that went, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. Yeah. I mean, for me, ironically enough, some of your least favorite tracks are <laughs> ones that I actually really enjoy. So. And see, that's a good thing. That's genuinely a good thing because it means that at least someone is getting something out of everything in this album. Mm-hmm. It's not like where everyone's like universally fuck track seven or whatever. You know, it's not one of those moments where everyone hates a song. That means if these guys go out and perform this, this stuff live, there's always someone cheering, which is a good thing. Mm. Crowd mentality is a good thing when it comes to music. If everyone is out there enjoying at least some part of the show, means everyone walks away with something and there's not people going, why the fuck did they play that song? Mm. Hopefully. I mean, <laughs> that might happen still. But in general, there's at least someone cheering when a song starts playing. Yeah. It's like, by the numbers, I thought was amazing and... That was definitely one of those, yeah, you did the right thing by having this as one of your lead singles, because that's sort of like, this is what we want to draw people into getting the album. This is going to be representative of the album. And it's the same thing with Damned If You Do, and I believe the other one that they put out was also, I think possibly Out of Balance was a little early, released early. If any of those tickle your fancy... Buy it. Mm. Just buy the album. Trust me, something on this album is going to make you dance and sing. Yeah. And possibly Hail Satan. <laughs> um, yeah, Into the Folds was one of my favorites. Uh, I, I think a lot of that has to do with how many similarities I was drawing with Queensryche. Because I love Queensryche, so I was sort of like, are we getting a tribute song here? <laughs> I, I'm not. Well, gonna... Since these guys have been around longer than Queensryche, maybe Queensryche's been a tribute to them all along. Um, I'm not sure who came first. I, I'm pretty sure these guys did. I mean, I, I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, it's not by very much. Because uh, these guys have been around forever. Yeah, because they've been around since 1980. Uh, I don't know when Queensryche started. Let's find out. Queen's Right got started in 82. Yeah. Ah, told you! So it, <laughs> Middle Church is older! <laughs> it's probably a case of there's a lot of back and forth sound-wise, so... Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of the old bands typically like to share back and forth. Yeah. I mean, you heard a lot of that back in the 80s. One person would put out put an album and everyone was like, Oh my god, that's great, but I can do it better! And that's what was great about like 80s metal, is they invented the genre, and then they went berserk with it. Mm. Well, I mean, technically metal started in the 60s, but it didn't really become the metal that we recognize until about the 80s. That's when there was a lot of leaps and bounds. It's sort of like, well, the 80s was the age of thrash metal, which is what a lot of bands around now have as their basis. Um... And the 70s was the age of the new wave of British heavy metal, which was when you had your Man of War, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, all that lot. Yeah, but that all came from the 60s, which is when you had Ozzy Osbourne with uh, Black Sabbath and their weird, weird stuff. Like, it's Mm. if you go by today's standard of metal, Ozzy is not metal. Ozzy is just some weird fucker in in the middle of the woods making weird noises with instruments. It's not really metal by today's standards, but that's because metal has branched into about 45 different genres. It's mm. kind of like how EDM was originally just electric light orchestra, and then that turned into EDM. And the less said about that, the better. 
anyway, no point going over what we cut or change or whatever because we've pretty much already gone over that. And it's basically a you just cut the war electric and that's it. I don't, and I don't even know if it necessarily needs to be cut. Just wedge it in somewhere. Yeah. I wouldn't put it in the first. Two. Like for me personally, in the first four, if you wedged it in there, I probably would have gone like, what the fuck is this doing in this album? Probably somewhere like between like maybe Rod Away and um, Into the Fold, maybe right there, mm-hmm. and then have Out of Balance as your final one. It just feels like such a weird e- exit track because I just can't hear an entire like an entire stadium like cheering violently because of the War Electric ending. Like okay, well maybe in my mind it's like yes, the song's over. Thank Christ. What else you got? Like, but that's that's the only thing I could hear a crowd going wild for. It doesn't really feel like it's gonna have that powerful like end part. Because, you know, whenever whenever bands are doing their final one and they've got, like, you know, they, they wail on their guitars and shit for three minutes nonsense. Yeah. I just can't really feel like that would be the War Electric as the outro. No. I- like, ironically, I could hear that of Damned If You Do. That could be an amazing outro, but it's such a great opener. Unless you're going to do it twice, I don't really feel like that would really work. Uh, unless you did some a bit like a Jimi Hendrix style, you know, you've got Voodoo Child and then you've got <laughs> Voodoo Child's Slight Return. Did that with Damned If You Do. That would be a weird decision choice, a weird choice. Like, I could see them closing with By The Numbers. I could see that happening. Yeah. In fact, thinking about it, By The Numbers should have been the closing track. It would have been a decent one because it's just such a weird way to say, goodbye, folks, see you next decade or whatever. It is such a strange way to end the show. Well, I'm just going through the By the Numbers wind out, and it very much feels like a closing track wind out. So, yeah, I think it would have worked better as the closing track. Yeah. So, there we go. That's that's our official final statement is By the Numbers should have been the final track to become the the end of the set list because an album should be like a set list where you have your good opener to get everyone excited the tits to flop out what have you and then for, for the end part to make them go do us do it another song more electric people would be shouting that because it just doesn't feel like a good ending but by the numbers would have worked so there you go and let's just do final scores what would you give it out of five i'd give it a three and a half out of five because it was definitely better than average mm. and because I want more of these albums like this and, you know, a return to what made you popular, what made you, you know, stand out to your fans, especially long-term fans, I'm upgrading that to a seven and a half out of five. Because for the love of God, if I have another band that I love do what any of the bands did this year, you know, God, no more fucking reimagining yourself as a soft rock band. No, not allowed. <laughs> So yeah, please uh, make more albums like this. I'm giving you, uh, I'm giving you the the triumphant uh, three and a half out of five, but officially seven out of, seven and a half out of five, because uh, I want more like this. And on my end, it's uh, I'm gonna have to say four and a half out of five, and a please more of this. No more of the dreck we've received from the likes of Shine Down and Smashing Pumpkins. But none more for that. Go out, buy this album, support the band, tell them that you want more of this. Ladies, if you feel comfortable with it, take your tits out, of course, when you're at one of their concerts, because the bands really appreciate that. Just kidding. It's a Me Too era. Guys have to take their tits out as well. (laughs) Well, in the case of guys, it's their cock out. No, 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 no. Tops only, no bottoms. Gender neutral. Oh, no rocking out with your cock out. Maybe in England, but not in the United States, because that's a felony. (laughs) But anyway... Um, I thought it was a misdemeanor. <laughs> um, I, my, it might be upgraded these days, to be completely honest. It's a little hard to tell these days. Shit's not quite the way it used to be. I, I know it used to be a misdemeanor. I'm not sure about now. I'm sure that they'd find some excuse. You're at a heavy metal concert and you were enjoying yourself too much. You're now going to jail for 20 years for sexual assault. Just saying. Anyways. Anyway, um... No idea what's up coming next. It's probably going to be Billy's rant about Bullet for My Valentine. There will always be hell to pay for fucking up one of my favorite guilty pleasures. Billy is unnecessarily perturbed by Bullet for My Valentine's new direction. They went from amazingly good, wonderful, angry, hate-filled music to I love God and God is great. Like, at least when P.O.D. did it, they did it for a fucking good reason. Because they were always a Christian band. 
Why the fuck did both of my Valentines suddenly go all psycho Christian? I didn't hear any of that, but then again, that's... I, I swear, a lot of the stuff that you're spotting, I'm not spotting because I don't live in America. Well, you also have to remember that everybody here has actually issued a Bible at birth. <laughs> yeah, we just get them in hotel rooms. Yeah, there's, there's the whole concept of a church in every corner is quite real in this country. What are they, Starbucks? Uh, I think they actually bought Starbucks at one point. It feels like it, because there really is a church in every corner in some in some cities where they actually have more more churches than they have restaurants. Okay, then. It's amazing to me. It really is. Anyways, so any final thoughts, any final statements, anything you want to plug or talk about or uh, discuss violently with your, with your um, fans and audience? Well, not much left to discuss other than if you liked what we had to say, please like, comment and subscribe and feel free to make suggestions for albums to cover. If you really enjoyed what we had to say, then you can subscribe to our Patreon. Link is in the description. If you want odd updates, you can follow me on Twitter. Link's in the description. Billy also has a Twitter you can follow, though he rarely updates. I don't exist on social media. It's all a lie. But yeah, all, all the links are in the description. Um... Don't forget, kids, to click that bell icon or else you will not get our content because YouTube sucks. Yep. We're trying to make a massive drive for the whole 4,000 hours watch. How the fuck you meant to... It's... That's another another complaint fest for another video. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, aside from Billy's rant about Bullet for my Valentine that's going to be up sort of like a couple of days after this video goes live there will be a review with richard returning that will be of real big fish's new album i am both excited and worried about that album because real big fish is another band that i've followed over the years but haven't really deeply paid attention to i'm curious how that's going to go down for you guys i am hopeful for real big fish mainly because scar has not burned me in the same way that rock and metal have as of recent i agree with you there that yeah i i actually am sad that i'm not being part of this review but i will gladly bow out and let more people do reviews with you because i i have almost a monopoly on this channel <laughs> so to allow me to work on other projects for you i will bow out and let other people review music with you there will be some special reviews covering the aquabats regarding the various things they did with kickstarter recently but that's in a bit of a nebulous state as we're not entirely sure when things are coming out. But there will be a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple of months. If you would like to provide additional money and support for this channel, please go to www.patreon.com forward slash Drayhawk. Spend and spend wisely. We could use every single penny. Almost all proceeds go to nobody. And remember, if you do subscribe to that Patreon, depending on the level you're at, you could actually become part of the reviewing team. Don't do it. The pain is so extreme. He's such a taskmaster. Unless, of course, you're into that, which at that point, he is taking additional subs. And by becoming part of the reviewing team, that does mean you get to pick anything to review. I strongly suggest someone pick the Carters. <laughs> I strongly suggest someone pick... Oh, what's an artist I especially hate? Uh, you could go for Taylor Swift. I mean, I can't stand her at all, so it'd be quite interesting to see how I rip her a new one. Um, I also can't stand Avril Lavigne, so... Someone pick Burl Ives. I want to hear someone pick Burl Ives, so you have to listen to Burl Ives. <laughs> I've never heard of that, but go for it. I am... Okay, if there's nothing to review, I am making you do Burl Ives with me. Okay, go for it. Anyway. Oh, I was going to say, I've been your subscriber forever, so damn it, where's all the reviews I'm allowed to declare? <laughs> well, it's all based on when you're available. <sighs> Fine, make it all about me. <laughs> That's it for this review, and it definitely wasn't by the numbers for once. No, it definitely was not by the numbers. In fact, one might say it's actually kind of rotting away into the fold and somewhat out of balance. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, folks. Thanks for listening.